I'm Nathan Withers. The next chapter of my story starts with yours. This is my paranormal experience. It would come out at night and just creep around my room. There's definitely something else going on. And had no idea what I just saw. Whatever was here did not want me here. It's changing colors. It was changing sizes. Oh, f that. Whatever this is does not enjoy the company of others. There are no explanations, even when I search for them. One of the most haunted locations in America. Malvern Man. I don't think you're that tough. And in my ear, I heard, yeah, I am. I've never heard a response like this come through. You have to leave something is happening that's bigger than us. That, to me, is what I call an intelligent haunting. Kind of like something went through the three of us. What if they're trying to communicate with us? I actually witnessed this, but I did not tell my husband what I saw because I didn't want him to think I was nuts. It was proven to me. They're here. They're around us. He's traveling that distance in less than a second. He is moving that fast. And I don't know if it's good or bad, ancient. Whatever is happening in here, the attic is, my opinion, the heartbeat. There's too much weird stuff that's happened to me. Maybe it's the magnetic field that I feel, and I, I can't explain it. It was so intense, and it was so, you need to get out of here now. It was foggy. It was misty. I've never seen anything like that in my life. It looked like it didn't have a mouth or a nose. All of a sudden, they see these fingers come across the door frame. I was scared for my life at that point, and it was smiling with the most evil grin that I've ever seen. Kind of makes you think that maybe it was an attachment. Was this a case of mistaken identity? Or did we just witness something that we can't explain? If I seem nervous, I am. It still has a hold on me. I don't know how to put words to what I experienced. It's just like we were being taunted by whatever it was that was up there. It took me out of the 100% skepticism to 100% believer. This, this is, is my, my paranormal, paranormal experience. experience. went from fascination and interest to being a true believer, for me to see, physically see things fall in the air, for me to physically see items move, for me to physically witness things just show up out of nowhere. Uh, you know, it was, um, there was one experience that I had that kind of defined uh, paranormal for me. But leading up to this event, uh, I did, hadn't really had any paranormal experiences and didn't really think about it too much. So it's still an event today that uh, impacts my heart and uh, impacts my drive to do what it is that I do. My name is John Harris, and this is my paranormal experience. I'm Nathan Withers, a self-taught documentary filmmaker from the Texas Panhandle, and this series will be exploring the unexplained encounters from people all over the world. This is my paranormal experience introduction, take one. Hi, I'm Sherry Copenhaver, and this is my paranormal experience. Just the word paranormal, like, just freaks me out. I don't even like saying it. That's why I just say scary stuff or something not right. But, I mean, I would like to say I don't believe it. I used to not. Um, but based on my experiences, I would have to say that I believe it now. First and foremost, the paranormal is a huge part of my life. It's a huge part of who I am as a person. I've spent the last 12 years of my life going to some of the most haunted places in the Texas Panhandle and beyond, trying to document and prove the existence of the afterlife. And I was able to do a lot of cool stuff during that time. I was able to meet a lot of amazing people 
with phenomenal encounters, life-changing encounters. But it came time to where it was time for me to, to turn the page and go to the next chapter of my journey. And I saw this great veiny face. It looked like it had no mouth, no nose or anything. And I remember the girls running down the stairs screaming. They told me there was something in their room. Whenever I would sleep in my room, it would come out at night and just creep around my room. I started having people locally from the UK, you know, different states from all over the country. All of the chairs in the room were pulled to the middle. And I was terrified. Reaching out about sharing their experiences. We knew that we were being tricked by something. It stuck with me, stuck with me my entire life. The experiences that I've had, and I've had more than one, um, and just having those experiences and realizing that there are no explanations. People that I never believed or even would think for a second believed in the paranormal. And it was smiling with the most evil grin that I've ever seen. We've been able to see dark shapes, shadowy figures. You know, about the time I was getting ready to get up out of my bed and go to my parents' room and, and tell them, I see this black figure pull out from between, you know, behind my television and look right at me. These events changed their life forever. Something happened to me in this house and it was real, man. It made me believe, and this, there's been multiple things that have happened in this house, and not only this house, but this entire block. It's haunted, man. It's, it's all haunted. It changed the way they viewed the afterlife. I don't know, it's kind of hard to define the afterlife. I think it can be so many different things in so many different ways. Um, I don't think we're alone at all. In fact, I know we're not alone. I've had too many experiences happen in my life to even think for a second that we're alone. I was never really a skeptic. I, I think I was always fascinated with paranormal and aliens and artificial intelligence and all that stuff growing up. I always was watching sci-fi um, with my little brother, especially when he was a toddler. So. Um, I don't think I was never not a believer, but I was always interested in ghosts and paranormal activity. You know, when I first started this project, I wanted to learn about different hauntings, different approaches and theories. And while searching for those answers, our crew was given an invitation of a lifetime. We were asked to come explore one of the most haunted locations in America, the Malvern Manor. My name is Josh Hurd. Uh, I'm a paranormal author, lecturer, investigator. Um, I'm also the co-owner of a haunted location in Southwest Iowa that we call Malvern Man. He showed us all the targeted areas, all of the infamous locations inside the building that are infamous because of its dark activity. We're in like what we just call the nursing home wing, okay. right? So this was a section of building that was added on in 1956 mm -hmm. just to kind of accommodate that nursing home setting, right? This is also what we kind of call the shadow man hallway. Okay. So all the way down this hallway, it's the last room on the right-hand side. It's room number two. And typically what happens is a very tall, black, humanoid figure will come out of room two. Mm -hmm. He will turn and then run at you. And I say, you know, I don't, I don't think you're that tough. And in my ear I heard, yeah, I am. The feeling that comes over your physical body when you start to observe this phenomenon is something that is next level. It is something that I cannot find words for. When I was able to speak with him in more detail about the paranormal, 
I was absolutely mind blown by what his answers were. This is where it starts to get fun because we are able to experiment and we're able to try certain things um, in different avenues of exploration, right? I don't think I've ever seen the paranormal broken down and, you know, the theories that was talked about by him explained like this or described or even talked about to this type of a level. It is interesting to me. One thing that I've noticed, especially lately, or one idea I should say that I'm beginning to entertain more and more is the idea of, you know, parallel dimensions, if you will. When this happens, he's traveling that distance in less than a second. He is moving that fast. Josh takes us to what is considered the darkest part of the building. So right here, brother. This is the attic. But usually, up here, it's a lot of growling, scratching, disembodied voices telling you things like, F off, die, I'm gonna kill you, I'm Satan himself. Like, it is not a very welcoming type of experience. What's weird to me is these noises are coming from the opposite sides of the walls. So like, in the walls. Now there's, initially like investigating this place, I thought it was probably like an animal, like maybe right. a family of raccoons or Absolutely. something, right? It's an old building, very feasible that an animal would get in here. Absolutely. Now the only place I can really kind of like investigate further is back through here on either side. So back on either side, there are these crawl spaces. Now I've been back through here eight different times, specifically looking for, for carcass or droppings, right? Or right. anything to suggest like something is or was alive, right? Right. The only things that I have found back there are very personal type items. A tobacco pouch, playing cards, keys, crushed up packs of cigarettes, beer cans, things like that. Nothing suggesting an animal. So I have no idea what's going on. What I do know is whoever or whatever this is does not enjoy the company of others. The manor was constructed in 1869. It was the fourth structure built in town. It operated as a hotel until the 1950s, then became a nursing home. Then, in the 1970s, it would be turned into a group home, taking on the most mentally unstable patients imaginable. Yeah, scientifically we're able to definitively prove there are other dimensions that are going on almost simultaneously with with us now there it would beg the question does this structure that i'm sitting in right now does this structure exist in another dimension why wouldn't it we've had numerous people get physically sick up here after about a period of maybe 20 to 30 minutes, um, they always seem to describe the same type of sensation. A tightness in their chest, which you may already be feeling. It'll definitely move to a nauseous feeling in your stomach. I actually have that feeling right now. So I'm just saying- That's like, crazy that you're you talking about You need to kind of like watch it. Like just kind of listen to your body. Yeah, you know what I mean? I promise you at the bottom of the stairs, you're going to feel 100% better. Promise. It is really weird up here. So. Like I said, like numerous people have tossed their cookies, for lack of a better term, right. up here. Um, so it's not a very welcoming experience for them. Um, we've had numerous people get run out of here and they're never coming back. Whatever is happening in here, the attic is, in my opinion, the, the heartbeat of this place. I came across a documentary that is about an investigation that was conducted here at this location. I'm Ron Haskett, and this is my paranormal experience. It's about a man named Ron Haskett who comes to investigate and ends up developing a spiritual relationship, like a father figure type of relationship to a spirit of a girl named Inez Gibson. And at 1,000%, 
changed my life. So as I'm looking at this footage, Ron is upstairs and he's in Inez's room. I was feeling down, I was depressed, and I just went to her room and I said, hey honey, I know in life you've had your own problems, but if the door is always open for me to come and speak to you, can you open your door for me? The results from Ron's question is not only groundbreaking, but extremely compelling. I hate bothering you with my problems, right? Because I know in life you had your own. If the door is always open to talk to you, will you open that door for me? And the door automatically, you hear it unlatch and the door opens on its own. That's the kind of relationship I have with her. That to me is what I call an intelligent haunting. The story with Inez Gibson is kind of interesting. Um, it's kind of like what I call the biggest unsolved mystery that we have here. So we know it was 1900, it was December 21st, so right around Christmas time. 12 year old Inez Gibson is outside playing with her eight year old brother Otto. She's cold or bored. She says, I'm going upstairs. We know 10 minutes pass. Otto, her brother, comes upstairs, finds his sister Inez hanging by her jump rope in the closet. He's not coming in like a lot of paranormal teams will and what I call like guns blazing, right? He's not like opening a door just screaming, show yourself or anything like that. He's, he's developing a relationship with these spirits and I think because of that relationship, they are reciprocating and giving him some of the most phenomenal things that I've ever personally seen. Now what I can definitively tell you is one of the most active spirits that we have here is a little girl claiming to be Inez Gibson. You will very audibly hear her running up and down these halls. She will call you by name. She will ask you to come and play, things like that. But we also know definitively Inez Gibson never died here. She died across the street. I don't even have a record of her ever being on property. Oh, really? So why in her afterlife would she choose to be here? We have no idea. During one of our breaks, I go to retrieve one of our night vision cameras that I had left filming in the attic while we were at base preparing for the next session. And while doing that, I faced a very frightening experience. And of course, the only part that was filmed was the aftermath. I'm a little shooken up. Um, you get down the whole steep staircase that's like this thin and I get four steps down, the light goes dark. It just completely, it, it completely f***ing dims out. As I'm walking around the corner to kind of walk out that doorway, I see this blacker than black shadow figure dart at me, like rushed at me. And it was enough where it made me jump back. After retrieving the footage, we later discovered that our periscope static sensor detected some type of vibration or movement and no one is there. We are only showing part of this as the sensor stays lit for over three solid minutes. Two weeks after filming at Malvern, Scotty and I are wrapping up production on another interview when Beth sends me a very shocking video. What she captured on her phone's video audio mm -hmm. is very bizarre. She sent me the, the video footage of it. Um, I'm gonna let you see it real quick. The first voice is her, ch is her child's. Mm -hmm. And then pay attention to the voice after that. I'll let you hit play on that. The voice that she captured is deep and also has vocal tone. That's a clear. See, play it again. Like, and you can hear her, you know, like you said, you hear her daughter right at the first. She sounds like she says, remember. Remember? remember? 
It has vocal tone too. It does very much so. You can hear it like halfway through the the whisper, you hear the uh, raspiness of a male voice. Is it also then feasible that whoever is in another dimension, which seemingly is who we're trying to communicate with, what if they're ghost hunters as well? What if they're trying to communicate with us in a series of knocks, in a series of bangs, in a series of questioning, in a whatever? What if we're the ghosts in this current reality? What if we're the ghosts to them? What if they're the ghosts to us? These are the thoughts that keep me up at night. My paranormal experience. Counting down. Three, two, one, action. I mean, I would like to say I don't believe it. I used to not. Um, but based on my experiences, I would have to say that I believe it now. She turns to the side of her and she said, shut up. It has affected me mentally and physically. So I asked her, what did you say? I wasn't talking to you, mama. I don't understand how you can't believe that there's something after you pass. I just believe that there's definitely spirits and ghosts, whatever you want to call them. Some move on, some don't. They're there. I'm Nathan Withers, a self-taught documentary filmmaker, hailing from the Texas Panhandle, passionate about documenting the unexplained. So what you are witnessing right now is real. There's no one in this building but us. Holy! The things I've experienced, caught on film, and felt come from a very real place. I want to know where energy goes after you die. There is something flickering coming kind of right towards you right now from the doorway. And I know I'm not the only one who has been a witness to the paranormal and unexplained phenomenon. You know, people talk about possessions. We do not have permission to hurt Fauna. To this day, I kind of regret that uh, she went on this experience. But I can tell you with no doubt that I feel that's what happened to me. There was one experience that I had that kind of defined paranormal for me. It stuck with me, it stuck with me my entire life. It's haunted, man. It's, it's all haunted. And it 1,000% changed my life. Disembodied voices telling you things like, F off, die, I'm gonna kill you, I'm Satan himself. I could distinctly hear the high heels walking down the hallway. And my encounter is actually the one that launched my paranormal journey. His death made a mystery. And he told me they love me. It's if there is any evil spirits, you are to leave in the name of Jesus Christ. This feeling was so intense. There's definitely a darkness here. My name's Beth. What's your name? So overwhelming. It's time I created an outlet that welcomes stories, experiences, and unexplained feelings. The next chapter of my story. Just because you don't believe in the devil doesn't mean the devil doesn't believe in you. Starts with yours. My paranormal experience. Hi, my name is Katrina Luddington, and this is my paranormal experience. And I want to talk to you about my experiences with my husband, Ralph Luddington. We live in Panhandle, Texas. Um, lived here for 15 years. During our ownership of Panther Pizza in 2017, Ralph was diagnosed with bladder cancer. We went through a lot of treatment and surgeries and different things, um, and it came down to that 
all of the treatments didn't work and we knew that um, the end was going to be coming. One of the major like aspects of the paranormal is obviously death and the process of death, the process of a of a body, a physical human body expiring. So December the 31st of 2019, we sold Panther Pizza and thought we were gonna have time to do those things, but his health deteriorated quickly. And um, he passed away on April the 8th of 2020. Ralph or Johnny Bonner, the device that Scotty's holding in his hand is called an SLS camera. And what that's gonna do is if you step in front of it or somewhere near it in its sight, it will detect you. This is our first trip back to the restaurant since Katrina sold it just a couple of years ago after Ralph had passed away. I've asked Katrina to be a part of this because I want to explore and try to see if Ralph's spirit is here. I'm getting something. Bro, oh, here, here, hurry, hurry, oh, yeah. hurry. I mean, I'm pointing right at the Get out here floor. It's gone. It's gone? It's gone. Wow, that was cool though. We weren't really sure at first what was going on. I, I wrote a lot of it off as just an old building and, and uh, people's imaginations or the girls would tell me that they would hear people talking in the back, people singing in the back, doors opening and closing when there was no one here. Whenever I was back in the back and there was a flashlight sitting on some beer cans on a table. I remember all the claims of Johnny Bonner being spotted by Kyra for this full-bodied apparition that they believed to be Johnny Bonner. And during some questioning, we hear this loud sound hit the table and then this light comes on. Well, when we went to the playback, you see this flashlight actually turns on by itself does nearly a complete 360 on top of these beer cans before it falls off the beers onto the table. As the restaurant is making the local front page newspaper, more evidence is discovered. In this footage, you can see the camera's cable being thrown or pulled by an unseen force. This was captured only moments after the flashlight spun off the beer cans. If there's an energy on this door, can you make it spike to a two? Oh my God, isn't it said that it spiked to a two? And Ralph had been smoking for over 40 years and had a terrible smoker's cough. I tell him it sounds like you're about to hack up a lung all the time. And it was just me here in the house and plain as day, I could hear Ralph coughing in the bar. So this was where I was when I heard the cough, and it's all the way at the other end of the house from the bar, but I could hear it that clearly that I had to walk, what is that, 10 feet through the hallway and into the living room? Yeah, and, easily, well, well, yeah. from here to that room is easily like 40, 50. 40, I bet it's 50 feet in there. It was him, it was his cough. And it was so real and so loud that I came out of the bathroom and went into the bar to look to see if he was here. I, it, I can't explain how real it was. While Scotty is operating SLS, one of my friends behind the scenes notifies me that our periscope static sensor is detecting activity. Hold on, Vernon's calling y'all. What's up, bro? Dude, the sensor is going off. It is staying red and it's like fluctuating. Yeah, get around the corner. You know, we, we've caught so many things on camera. You know, when we found the thermal image 
on the first investigation and could see someone kind of working in the corner over there. Ruby Yates was the original owner of the Panther Pizza restaurant and the thermal image capture that was documented, you can see it looks like there is a person either cooking, cleaning, or doing something inside the kitchen. And Katrina and several others that used to work at the restaurant believe that this apparition or this figure of this person could be the spirit of Ruby. I don't understand how you can't believe that there's something after you pass. After our experiences at Panther Pizza, you know, I've always believed that there is something, but it was proven to me that they're, they're, they're here, they're around us, and the people that love you come back and to see you and want to make sure that you're okay and let them know that, that they love you and they're going to be around. The question of the afterlife. Very good question. Do any of us really know the answers? That's why we do this. And we are actively trying and have been actively trying to, to answer this question. That's what makes this field very interesting is because every investigator brings new thoughts to the table. And every investigator um, has their own ideas. And that's one best thing is we can learn and get share our ideas together and gain knowledge um, because until we truly reach that plane all we have are theories are we any closer maybe because you know we research in it we try to study it but still there's no direct answers as to you know what what the afterlife is now that i've gotten older and i've kind of given it more thought and gotten more on the field i feel like we as humans we're energy you know, energy is anything to do with anything that has movement with it. And energy is neither created nor destroyed. Part of the reason why I'm in the paranormal field, you know, everything we do here is theoretical. And seven out of the 10 times we experience something, it's explainable. I believe, I don't know how to explain it. And I've had people still tell me, that's just stupid, it's crazy. It's like, well, I don't know. If you were there and you experienced what I experienced, there's something going on. And you have to <laughs> believe something is happening that's bigger than us. I can definitively say that, you know, after all the stuff that we've done, that I've been through, that I've seen with my own eyes, like I know for a fact that the paranormal exists. Is there an in-between um, leaving this earth and going to heaven? Is there souls that can get stuck? Do they have unfinished business? I don't know if we'll ever get the actual answer to, to that question until it becomes our time to experience that for ourselves. I 100% believe that paranormal activity definitively exists and whether or not we're ever going to get closer to that answer, I'll, I'll never know. We'll never know, probably, right? But that's certainly not going to stop us from trying every waking minute to see if we can get, finally get, a definitive answer to those questions. Next time on My Paranormal Experience. Hello, I'm Jason Rushing. My name is Valerie Ball, and this, and this is, is my, my paranormal, paranormal experience. experience. So we were invited to Skelly Town, Texas. This feeling was so intense. This is the creepy hallway. There is most definitely some type of a lingering. Pretty sure you made it go off earlier. Kind of like something went through the three of us. I got spooked. What was that? What the f was that? that? Was, this was changing color. It was changing sizes. Whatever was here did not want me here. But I could distinctly hear high heels walking. I've never heard a response like this come through. My paranormal experience.